morning, YouTube. Thanks for joining me for another Clydesdale Rider episode. Recently in Missoula, it has been cloudy. All of Montana has been cloudy and smoky. So we've been having a ton of fires. So I haven't been able to go out and ride. You're probably thinking, what does that have to do with anything? Well, we get so much ash and smoke in our system that you can't breathe. And they actually recommend that you don't go out and ride and hike and stuff like that. Plus I get this, this coughing feeling and it, and it just tastes like, you know, campfire. So unfortunately the last three weeks I have not been able to ride. So hopefully this goes away soon. So I figured in the meantime, I would go do a gear review since that's what a lot of you guys have been asking for. I'll show you some of my new stuff and I'll review some of my old stuff. First up are helmets. You've probably seen me wear a couple different helmets at this point. This one's brand new, so I haven't seen that one yet. This one I've worn um, for many, 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 many years. And then I have a Lumos, Luminos light up helmet, um, which is blue and has lights in it and more of like a street helmet than a, a mountain biking helmet. But anyways, this helmet's been pretty good to me. I actually bought this used Oh man, I don't know, maybe about five years ago or so. Um, and so I don't know how old this guy is, but I mean, it's taken a beating over the years. I mean, the, the fabric's coming off. Um, I finally had to upgrade because uh, the black or the back plastic part actually had broken. Um, you can kind of see here uh, recently. So um, it looks like this helmet's from 2004. So this is definitely due to be retired at this point so um i got the same brand helmet gyro or gyro um got the uh orange stitching on it or the orange uh, logo on it to kind of match my my bike um probably a little bit better technology definitely lighter of a helmet than my previous one and uh, it looks like the set, the back comes down a little bit a little bit more and the adjustment on the back is a little different. MIPS, I don't even know what that means, um, but this is the Radix uh, version. That's my helmet, probably one of the most important things um, that you need to buy when you're out mountain biking. Next on the list is my sweat rag. So I wet this um, and then I tie it around my head and then I put my helmet on my head. So. I've had this probably longer than I've had that other old helmet, but this thing is great. If you're a bigger guy and you're sweating like me, um, the sweat pours off my face, pours off my face. So when I tie this around my head first and I bring it down a little bit on my forehead, you've probably seen it in some of my videos, it helps keep the sweat from dripping in my face and dripping down on my glasses and so on and so forth. So um, I love this thing. I've tried a couple different brand ones over the years. Um, and this one just, just works. So I haven't given it up. You could use it on either side. You just get it wet, wring it out, put it on your head. Keeps you nice and cool. Sucks up the sweat. Here we have my gloves. So I'm going to start out with these ones because they're my older ones. These are super old. Um, I would say probably 2006, 7, 8, somewhere around there. I actually originally bought these for my motorcycle. So when I was riding my motorcycle, these were the gloves that I used it's they're now super super old um so they're getting worn down i'm getting holes in the fingertips um you know so i i it's it stinks because they work so well for mountain biking and i've looked at some of their newer ones uh i can't get the sizing to fit right these are xl the new xls don't fit my hand i did order a pair um, they don't have the colors that I wanted, but I was, I've was i been so impressed with these gloves to last as long as they did that I really wanted to get another pair. And, and hopefully I could find another pair somewhere because I would like to use these because these are getting retired today along with that helmet. So gloves are super important though. I can't tell you how many times I have like knuckled a tree or even just like got a flat tire. It's just so much easier to be, you know, wearing gloves when you're working on stuff. So these are getting replaced for now with my new Fox gloves. So these are a lot thinner because they are actually mountain biking gloves. They're not a motorcycle glove. Um, I do like having my fingers uh, covered up. Unlike some people, I think that um, they do like the, the, the fingers cut off and, and just the protection here. I would say if you're doing like maybe a lot of downhill and potentially crashing more, you probably need something a little beefier than this. But I need something that was kind of cool that I can get grip. Um, I got these on here, which is nice. Nice upgrade from my old gloves because I can actually touch my cell phone um, and my GoPro screen when I'm recording for you guys. So that's kind of nice, a uh, little innovation over the years since 
I got these and there wasn't even touch screens around at the time. So uh, pretty cool. I like these. They match my bike. They're the uh, Fox Ranger glove. So if you're looking for something, I, I want to say they're like 20, 25 bucks. They weren't very expensive, maybe a little bit more, um, that these are a good way to go. So they fit my hand pretty good, all things considered. And these are an extra large as well. Next up is my elbow thing. <laughs> um, I actually just bought this because recently I've been getting a pain that's been shooting, you know, from the front of my arm to the back and then back to the elbow. And somebody online had mentioned that it was probably tennis elbow from riding and I get it really bad when I'm triggering the brakes. Um, it seems to hurt quite a bit. So I don't think you guys have seen this in my videos yet, but I just bought this on Amazon. Um, I could send a link. I'll put a link in the comments below for you guys if you're interested. It works pretty well. Um, it's just a piece of fabric, so I was kind of surprised that it cost, you know, 25 30 bucks, whatever I paid for it. But surprisingly, it does help quite a bit. So um, if you are having some kind of issues, and this is new, it just started. I don't know if it's from the weight being forward on my bike um, or if it's from, you know, grabbing the triggers on the brakes. But this is something I just had to recently do, and this is this has been helping quite a bit. I noticed, uh, you know, obviously when I was biking, I can, I'd can i have some issues triggering. And then afterwards, I would, like, grab something and, and try to pick it up, and I started having all sorts of issues. So I went and got this, and it's been helping a lot. Hopefully the situation fixed itself, and I don't have to go to the doctors, but now I, I ride this. Okay, so for t-shirts, I typically wear mostly Eddie Bauer stuff. So they have this uh, motion line, which also has free dry. I like this because it's super uh, like ventilated, super light. I think it's made of polyester. Yes, most of the shirts that I wear when I go biking are made of polyester. I would recommend this to anybody who's larger, who gets hot, who sweats a lot. Um, these help me stay so cool. I do have a couple other brands, but majority of the stuff I wear is Eddie Bauer. So if you're looking, you know, at getting a new wardrobe for biking, cotton, it gets sweaty, it gets heavy, it holds it in. This stuff, I've been mountain biking, I've sweat so bad down in here um, or on the back of myself with my, my pack. And this just dries up in a matter of minutes. So good way to go if you're a sweaty guy like me, because this will make your ride a lot more comfortable. All right, probably the moment you've all been waiting for, padded bike shorts. So I avoided these like the plague for years, basically my whole life up until just recently. So I was at um, Whitefish skiing and in town they had a, a bike shop and I happened to go in and they had a pair of 3X, um, I'm not even going to try to say the name, um, pants there and I was like you know what I better give these a shot because I have tried getting these before um, the 2x never fit me um, I am down in weight so maybe that has something to do with it but I usually don't see a 3x either so um, now that I've lost a little weight they're actually a little loose I shouldn't say loose on me but they don't fit as snug as they did you know when I first bought them so people like these because they have the pad um, on the bottom here. You're not supposed to wear these with underwear or boxers or anything. You're supposed to, you know, free ball it with these. But um, they're kind of nice because they have these um, little grips on the on the legs and on the, the waistband um, to stay on you. So I will say they fit nice and they're extremely comfortable to wear. My pair came with like an outer short um, because you could buy just the insides by themselves. I bought the outer shorts. I want to say these were like 70 I think they were 80 $85 uh, for the set. I think you could buy these by themselves for like 40 bucks. Um, I will say everything fits nice. Now the real question is, are they worth it? So I've gone through many debates with several biking friends that have told me I need to get biking shorts. And I w I've said this in other videos, when you first start biking, your ass is going to hurt no matter what, okay? Now, the first time I wore these, and I've been biking all season and I've had no issues, the first time I wore these, it started hurting me right in here, um, kind of where the bone is on your butt. Um, I was really disappointed the very first time. I was like, wow, here we go again. Um, it was kind of like I was, I was riding the bike again for the first time in years. Then I adjusted my seat a little bit and relieved some of that pressure. So it helped. 
Now, are they worth it? I don't know. If you have an issue and you really like biking and you seem to not be able to find the right seat to you know, get yourself comfortable, then this might be a way to go for you. For me, I don't think I needed to spend the money on these and I probably won't buy any more. That could change in the future, so you know, don't hold me to that. But me personally, probably didn't need these. Um, I think with my seat and just being used to riding without them, I've been fine. But if you want to give them a shot, go for it. Um, lots of people I know swear by them, and I finally did pull the trigger, but I don't necessarily think it was worth it for me. So give them a shot. Okay, the pack. So this is my camel pack. It's got storage here, it's got storage here, and it's got room for um, a water bladder here. This pack is also ancient. Not even going to try to figure out how old this thing is. I can tell you right now, I bought it about eight years ago. It's pretty solid. So if you're looking at a camel pack and trying to decide if you should buy one, it's a worthwhile investment. Uh, Chelsea has bought in the Walmart ones and a couple other brands, and they all stink. Um, every time we get a camel pack, uh, we end up doing pretty well with them. So she has one now and I have this one. And I actually bought this one used at the same time I bought my helmet at a thrift shop and I replaced the bladder and so on and so forth. So um, grab one of these if you're thinking about it. Uh, hands down, great product. The bladder, so these I've actually gone through a few of these um, over the years. So weird stuff. The last one I had, it actually cracked up here when I was filling it. And I went to tighten it, it just snapped like the the plastic got brittle or something like that um, the one before that wasn't uh, clipping in down here anymore for me so I will say their water bladders maybe not as good a quality this one I actually don't like because it's fatter when it's full and it's actually now pushing against my back where the other ones I think were just a tad longer this one's a two liter and I really would like to step up to a three liter but I just don't think it'll fit in my bag very well um, for me Chelsea has a three liter in her bag. She does not have a camel pack one. She has a different different brand one, and that seems to work fine as well. So um, definitely need hydration when you're on the trail. I learned this when I lived in Arizona. So I fill this every single time I go out, whether I'm gonna use it or not. And you can tell in the last ride, I used a lot of it, but I didn't use all of it. Also in my pack, if I go somewhere, I grab their trail maps. A lot of people use uh, trail forks as I do, but I will say these are way easier to use, I think, personally when it comes to figuring out where you're at on the trail um, if you don't have the service or downloaded the map prior to. I always just grab, you know, their maps and throw them in my pack. Sometimes I don't use them, sometimes I do. So, big thing, spare tube. You're all thinking, well, you're tubeless, why do you need a tube? Well, I grab a tube in case I put a big gash, you know, in my tire. I've seen online where people have blown their actual tires apart. So having a tube is a good thing to have as a backup. So I'll see if I can find some pictures and, and throw those in here as the video goes on. But yeah, this is uh, definitely a must. You can tell it's never been used. It's like the original one. Um, on, my, on this bike, this is my stash tube. So it's pretty heavy, especially if I bring this and I bring one for Chelsea because um, I usually try to carry one for each of us depending on what bike we're at we're on a lot of times i'll forget to switch it out if i'm on my super fly from my stash next this is mainly for me um, in case something happens but i like to have a flashlight of some sort in there this is just a cheap harbor harbor freight flashlight i check it every once in a while to make sure it still works and it does this is a battery pack for me to recharge my phone or whatever electronic device i am using while i'm out on the trail in case something happens and i have an emergency and then obviously a couple of sorted cables um, i've actually used this to try and charge my little gopro um, when i went dead on me once and i had a big downhill which actually worked pretty good i carry stickers to give away while i'm on the trail i have a lot of people ask me um, about the trail and stuff like that. So I'll stop and I'll be like, hey, here's a sticker, come check out my YouTube channel. I actually recently, very ironically, had somebody locally uh, kind of recognize me when I was up at Whitefish, so that was really cool, but I forgot to give them a sticker. So if you're watching this today, feel free to hit me up and I will give you a sticker or send it to you because um, I meant to give you one and I totally forgot. So thanks for watching. Next, tools. Tools, tools, and more tools. So this is pretty much everything I need to work on my bike. So a set of levers, uh, multi-tool, which you've seen in some of my other videos. I actually use it all the time. 
This is compressed air in case I have to fill up that tube. Um, realistically, I've used this more to help other people out than I have myself since I've owned it. Uh, basically, this just screws onto the top and then you put, place this on the nozzle, um, depending on which one it is, or on the, uh, the gosh, why am I drawing a blank right now? On the uh, valve stem, and then you just shoot it right up. So um, this is actually the wrong type of CO2, so I can't even use that one. So uh, this one here is the right one. So good thing that I got that, I guess. Next thing is a pair of pliers. I've used this uh, multiple times, so just, you know, have it on me because I got to pull the brake pin out or whatever I need to grab that small those work. And then obviously I have some gloves, which I just keep in here until they break because you can see that I've used them and they're dirty and gross. Next thing on the list, sandpaper. You're probably thinking, what the heck do you need sandpaper for? I never even heard of anybody using sandpaper until I moved to Montana. So Montana has probably some of the steepest grade hills I've ever gone down um, in all my trail riding, whether it's Pennsylvania, New York, you know, Colorado. Colorado was pretty aggressive, but still. We have very sharp, steep descents here in Montana. So what ends up happening is you get high speed glaze over your brakes and brake pads. So every so often I'll take it off and I will give a light sand on the rotor and the brake pads and that makes the squeaking go away. It makes my brakes work better. Something I really like having them in my bag now that I've been doing a lot of downhill stuff. So uh, something to note, not a lot of people have sandpaper on them. Every time I've been out and asked for it, nobody's had it. So now I carry it with me. Bear spray. <laughs> so being in Montana, if you read the news or look at the you know, online news or whatever everybody's doing now, you will see that there are bears in Montana. And there are lots of bears. A few years ago, there was a forest ranger or somebody um, mountain biking with his friend up at Whitefish, where I just was. I think it was Whitefish. And he came around a turn, you know, doing 20, 30 miles an hour. And there was a grizzly bear sitting in the middle of the trail. And he hit it full on and unfortunately is no longer with us. So bear spray is the number one deterrent when it comes to bears. A lot of people say, you know, a big gun will help. Well, you're probably not wearing a big gun, and chances are you're not going to be able to get it out quick enough. You see in a lot of my videos um, the bear spray flopping around in the corner of the camera on the left side. Um, I put it on the front of my, my pack, so I have easy access to it. It's literally just a strap and pull that off, and you can spray your bear. Luckily, I haven't come into any encounters with bears. I have come across bear droppings on the trails, which makes me a little hesitant. But honestly, after everything I've read, this is the very first thing I bought when I moved to Montana. Uh, before I started biking or anything, like I bought uh, three or four cans of bear spray. I have it in my car. Chelsea has one. I have one. And then uh, I think we have another one in our camper. So um, if you see this flopping around, I'm really sorry in the videos. I try to hold it down. But a lot of times when I'm angled downhill and going down, it does catch you know the corner of the camera here. So hopefully I'll figure something out. Um, with that, I actually might get a new camel pack um, backpack, so we'll see if I relocate that somewhere else.